South Africa is waking up to the far-reaching consequences of alcohol abuse. This is seen in the social media hashtag Alcohol Free SA campaign. While alcohol affects all in the country in one way or another, none are as affected as the residents of the small town of Da'ar in the Northern Cape. Da'ar, meaning the artery, was a reference to the area's water supply seen as life-giving veins of water. Today, however, those veins seem to pump liquor, hopelessness and decay more than life. So, so, while the entire country struggles from growing unemployment, here the levels reach far above 50%. That's why I drink as a drunk as a type of stress here. All that is. So, I'm going to work as a work. 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 So, I'm going to work as a work. I'm going to work as a work. I'm going to work as a work. But the problem affects others apart from the adults, those that are unable to choose or protect themselves. As you swung at us, then you come as a drunk, as some of us are drunk as a swung at us. So for me, you've already drunk when I was swung. Yeah, man, here. I got. The effects on many children here are devastating. This is despite the Foundation for Alcohol-Related Research setting up shop here. South Africa has the highest reported FASD rates in the world. Globally, the World Health Organization estimates that the world prevalence rate is around 1,5%. Now, if we compare that to the rates reported in South Africa, we will understand how big our problem is. In some communities in the Northern Cape province, the rate is as high as 28%. We've been here in the R for most of the day, and it's clear that there isn't much to do in terms of any healthy recreational activity for people here, young and old. So the easy access to alcohol and drugs seems to be the only getaway from the harsh reality that people face here. The harsh cocktail of hopelessness, unemployment and crime yields a difficult environment to live in. The consequence is a vicious cycle. There are some in the community like Julius Rose, however, who are working to turn the tide and as we're conducting the interview with him, two young people passes carrying a crate full of alcohol. What we are, what we are actually trying to do, we're trying to create this, this or we're trying to, to create this image to our people that that shouldn't be normal. That, that shouldn't be something that our young people should be looking out for. You know, um, it, it should be something that you as a young person should actually say, when I get out there, when I make it, I want to come back and I want to give back to my community, making sure that we don't see that as normal. 
His organization hosts seminars at schools. The schools and we do something that we call character transformation programs, where we actually we we indoctrinate, we use music and, and entertainment to draw the kids. But in the music there's a there's a there's a message. Um, in the in the programs of teaching the music or teaching um, um, them how to how to do the live live entertainment, there, there are certain messages and there are certain certain things, certain principles that, that we impart into them. Um, I would say I would say subconsciously they realize that if you want to do this, if you want to achieve this, then you have to step away from the norm of our society. While giving support to the youth at schools has an impact, the reality is the children return to the environment they come from, experiencing the same harsh influences. This may have been why the recent move by the Economic Development Department in the province to herald the ANC's January 8th event with extended alcohol trading hours was met with criticism. We are saying that alcohol is ravaging households here in the province. We can't be seen as the organization to be part and parcel of advertising uh, alcohol and intoxication. So we've taken a stance to say that uh, we will not support that. In fact, we've also interacted with the MEC concern. We explained the predicament to the MEC. Fortunately, he's a disciplined member of the ANC. As soon as we drove the message home, he understood and he apologized. And I'm sure you've seen the reaction also from his side. While this is a noble move, many in the R admit they would like to see more effort from the government and the ANC to turn things around for them and their children. For Newsroom Africa on Channel 405, Amitekani Makwedze, the R in the Northern Cape.